Hey guys, EBP Man here, and today we're going to go over tips and tricks that are going to allow you to master your new iPad Pro 12.9 or 11. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now with iOS 12 and also the new iPad, there are some really cool gestures that I see most of my friends not leveraging and not understanding and therefore not taking advantage of the best workflow you can have with an iPad. So in this video, we're going to go over gestures, tips and tricks, things that are going to allow you to really take advantage of your iPad and use it like you never did before. Let's get right to it. Now guys, some of these tips are going to be very basic, so we're going to go from very simple all the way up to uh, more advanced type of motions and features. So the first thing we want to talk about is the fact that there is no home button now available uh, for you to tap. So unlike Samsung where you have that virtual home that you can press, here there's nothing you can press. So here I'm in a desktop editing software that I was testing uh, where I actually created the video just a couple of minutes ago and I want to go home. So what do you do is you swipe from the bottom up and that's how you go home. Now, other option that you can go through is if you don't swipe up all of a sudden, you can actually have another motion or another gesture out of this same approach. So I'm just going to move up slowly, and you'll notice that by moving up slowly, what I now have is the dock comes back up. So this is going to give you the ability to launch another program, and it actually takes you in time into something called multi-window uh, modes. We're going to be showing that in a couple seconds. So again, just so that uh, we refresh that, if you swipe up, you're going to go home. If you swipe up slowly, you're going to be able to navigate to another program without leaving this one. It's going to obviously replace it, but it's a lot faster than you swiping home and then clicking on your program, especially if it's here on your dock. All right, so let's go ahead and try that. Instead of swiping home, we're going to come up slowly, and then we're going to say we want to go into Safari, and now we're here. If I want to go back, I can do something like this too. Or I can actually swipe this way and come to Safari, swipe this way to go back. Now let's say you want to be able to go into a fourth or fifth program and, and there's a lot of stuff going on on your tablet. So what you do is you bring up like this and if I hold and then I let go, notice what I'm seeing here. I see all of the programs that were available and open. So again, let's do that one more time. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to swipe up hold and then move over like this and now I can jump to any application that is open. Now another thing I do often when uh, from a workflow perspective is as I'm working you know let's say on a program is depending on the environment I want to change kind of like the brightness level. So there's a couple things that will happen. If you bring it over here, you're going to get your notifications. But if you bring over from the side here, you're going to be able to adjust your brightness. So you can lower or increase your brightness. You can lower or increase the sound of your tablet. And you really don't have to go to the hardware buttons to do that. Everything I'm doing it right here by simply swiping from the side. Now you could do that in any application. So I can swipe from the side and I can get these controls. Uh, if I'm tr I travel a lot, so turning on my airplane mode is something that you can do, especially if you have a cellular version of the tablet. Again, I'm going to come over here, let go, and then what I could also do is do this to adjust these controls. All right, so now here's another tip, and this has been driving some of my friends crazy, especially as there's no home button. If you press the power button to turn off the tablet, it doesn't turn it off anymore. Watch what's going to happen. It launches Siri. So, how do you turn off the tablet? Well, that's going to simply be done by pressing and hold the power button at the same time as pressing down the volume rocker. That's how you're going to shut this thing down. All right, let's go ahead and try that. And use these, see right here. Notice right here, it came up. Swipe it, and that's how our power down. Especially, you want to do that if you find that the tablet is kind of not responsive or it's just misbehaving. Now something else, uh, let's say for example you want to take a screenshot, so how do you do it now? Uh, in order to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to press the power button and the volume up button. So you're going to go ahead and press them at the same time, like this, and then it takes your screenshot. So here I have my screenshot, but now what you can do also is you can, you have some graphical abilities here that you can actually, using this little um, app here, modify the graphic. Uh, draw some pictures on it, color it, highlight it, or just create some annotations. Now one of the features I really love uh, with my Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and just the Note series is to be able to 
access quickly notes to take them on the screen. And one of the things that you can do if you did pick up the pencil is if you tap once on the screen you can bring up a notepad. Now this is more like a draw pad than anything else but it's a quick way where you can start modifying or taking notes without having to launch the program. Now one of the things that I wish this would do and this would make me very happy is if I could do this also with OneNote. But right now it works with the uh, notepad that is part of the Apple ecosystem uh, and it's not launching your actually OneNote or any other program. But it's a pretty cool feature that many people don't know. Now once you take your note, uh, one of the things I did want to mention is that your iPad will still remain secure. So while this feature is on that you can take notes, uh, no one would be able to log into your iPad unless, you know, obviously you were the one using it and it did the face scan or someone knew the pin. So this is just about taking notes and you can turn that on or off as well. So let me show you that. So I'm going to close this note. I'm going to make sure I'm not close to the screen. Close it and then we're going to go swipe up and notice how it's going to ask for the password. Now the one thing you can do is by going into general, going into settings, looking at notes, is you can turn that feature off. You can also set specific behaviors as well as going back to the previous note. Uh, again, I just wish I could have right there uh, the program that I wanted launched as soon as I did that. That would give me a super thumbs up. Now one more thing about notes I just wanted to share with you is um, as you write on the screen, there's a couple things that you can do. Uh, most of us start writing or drawing on our notes and then would like to use the eraser. So what you can do now, uh, and this is pre-configured, is just by simply tapping twice like this. You'll notice how the eraser came up. Now it goes to the other one. So you can write, tap, erase, tap twice and continue to write. So really neat feature. There's a lot of configuration options or just a few configuration options that you can go through in the settings area but that's just one feature I wanted to make sure you know about that you can write, tap for erase and go back to write again. Now another area that we're going to talk about is personalization especially when it comes to our control panel here. So you notice that there's a lot of little different things here. Uh, things that you may not have on yours or things that you may want to remove. So how do you personalize this area to meet your specific needs? Uh, let me show you how you're going to do that and we'll go into the settings for that. Now let's talk about your application bar that you have here. You notice that there's a little line there. These three um, applications represent applications that I just recently went to. These are the ones that are on my dashboard or my nav bar. I can have them the, here. I can actually remove them as well. Let me go off of that. All right, so let's talk about the nav bar for a second here. So one of the things I did is I pressed and held on it so that all my icons started jiggling. You have a little line here, and this line separator indicates that these three are your recent apps. These are the last ones I was in, and it just continues to cycle and update. These are the ones that I have fixed in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this one off because I don't want that there anymore. And what I can do is I can look for applications that I want to be able to um, see here at all times. And that way I don't have to hunt for them. So I'm going to choose one and bring it down to this bar. So I'm going to choose OneNote as the program that I'm going to bring here. Put that right there. So I have the news in OneNote. I'm also going to grab YouTube TV because I do like watching this a lot. And I'm going to put it right here. So now the bar has OneNote, YouTube TV, and also Google News that I have put in this row. Uh, remember, this is going to be your recent list, and this is going to be the one that you can do quick hits to. So I have all these guys here in the order I like. Everything looks good. Alright, so next let's take a look at some multitasking type tips. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Chrome. And I do this quite often. So I, I am doing some research online and I'm working on a script for something that I'm going to review on the channel. So what you could do though is do this. I'm going to bring this up slowly so that I can bring this control panel up. And I'm going to grab my OneNote. So I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to just drop it right here. So what will happen is it's going to launch OneNote. I can interact with OneNote. So here I have OneNote, and I can also interact with this website. In this case, I'm looking at the YouTube uh, for my channel. So you can have two things going on at the same time. And again, it's pretty cool that you can actually control you know, what's going on over here and over here without it interfering with each other. So now once you have you know, concluded the work that you're going to do in this multitasking window, you, know, you can move it to the site if you like, or what you could do is just swipe it away, and then it's gone. Now here's another option, right? I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. And now we're going to do multi-window. So we're going to split it in half. I'm going to bring this over. Oh, let's do that again. 
And you notice how I'm putting it right here on the side, which is different. Before I dropped it right here, now I'm putting it right here. Now when I let it go, I have two windows here. Let me go ahead and grab that little dot right here. And now I have my one note and I have the internet right here. So what I can do is I can actually do my research here, you know, have my experience that I can navigate and do research. And over here, I can take all my notes. Now the last thing is if you want to go ahead and get rid of that, all you got to do is swipe this way just like we did earlier. And now this is the full window. So guys, that concludes our tips and tricks that are going to help you master your new iPad Pro. Let me know if there was a tip or trick that you learned and you didn't know before in the comment area. Or if you would like to share a tip, do the same thing. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell icon to get notified when new videos become available.